Hello, this is a show, this is a, the start of my very first show, it's called, um, very first show that's been done this year, it's called, um, Captured in the Psych Ward, the HDU, which is the High Dependency Unit, which I was in last year. Let's have a listen. Marie. You see, you see the, the year is 2014, and Ron Cooper opened a new HDU in Royal Melbourne Hospital where anyone who has a mental health breakdown can go. You see, there are the regular patients, like tough guy Paddy Rowe, who was in there because he is too tough for the modern world, and he is a danger to his neighbours. Because when he got angry, he purposely doesn't take his medication just to bash his mates to a pulp, and his voice he hears in his head of one of his old mates really is getting too weird. So Patty is hardly ever released. And also Brad Carpenter, who robbed the liquor store because his schizophrenic voices were saying, Go for it! Way to go, Brad! But these voices never existed in any part of his life. So the doctors and staff of the HDU were too worried about the safety of Brad and his loved ones. They really didn't want him released. He was too dangerous, but not bad enough for prison. But he often got angry a few times when it came to medication time. But that was very rare. And then the women's section with Kate and Big Anne and Susan, who spent most of their time complaining about the state of their bathroom and the way the nurses always got in their way. But when, but then Brad walked past the HDU and said, Howdy, fatty. And Big Ann said, Shut up! You bloody, mate, you bloody male chauvinist pig. And Brad said, I ain't no male chauvinist pig. And yelled at her saying, You are scum! You are too fucking nice for me! I rob bunks, lady. And Big Ann said, just because you're Rob Banks doesn't make, doesn't make you one of us, you know. No, it doesn't make you one of us at all. Paddy Rowe came up to Big Ann and said, Would you leave Brad alone or I will bash you up and you will be left for the doctors to sort out. You see, we don't like schizophrenics here, buddy. You see, you are too weird. Those voices have no reason for being in your head. And then Martin Kelly, who was a schizophrenic, who had this obsession with children's legs. And most of the time he takes his medication and everything, it will be all right. But sometimes Martin forgets to take it, which he did before today, and grab the child outside of school. And Paddy Rowe got very cranky with Martin Kelly and bashed him up. When the doctors and psychologists tried to break them up, and this fight was just before lunch, Martin spoke to the psychologist about what is he going to do about this sudden urge he has to grab children after a day of not taking his medication. After lunch, Big Ann and Martin Said, can you piss off? What don't you want? What don't... We don't want your kind around here. We will never like you, Martin Kelly. You are a total crazy person. Martin said, I know those voices aren't true. When I take my meds, but I ain't perfect, woman. And Big Ann punched Martin in the stomach, saying either am I, but I that I pick on someone my own age. I have guts. You, Martin Kelly, are a coward. You only pick on kids. And then Brad came up to Martin and said, Shut up, woozy, 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 woozy. Only woozies hassle children. And you are a coward. And being captured in the psych ward is the best place for you, you cunt. Susan and Kate were who were so determined to get out, tried to keep quiet 
and not fight and break any rules so they can get free. But Kate was a bit of a rebel, rebel, seeing she was put in there for making too much noise around her apartment and being quiet was hard. She never yelled at a worker, but she got in trouble, which keeps her there for a long time. And day after day, she is trying to get released to buy things like packets of crisps and bottles of coke and maybe a few smokes. But they can't smoke in the high dependency unit. The only place they can smoke is at 11.20 in the courtyard. But they only get 40 minutes to do that. That was a rule that Ron Cooper brought in. Mind you, Ron Cooper came into chat with to Martin Kelly to wonder why he forgets to take his med. And Martin said, it only happened when kids really pissed me off. But as Big Anne walked past and she heard that, she said, listen, Kelly, kids are innocent. And if in the fucking future you charge after kids in my family, I will bash you to a pulp. You see, men are stronger. But you, Martin Kelly, are a whip. And Ron said, Anne, settle down. And Anne said, no, he's a child snatcher. He should be with real prisoners rather than a psych ward. And Ron said, yeah, mate, yeah. But Martin has an illness and he can't survive in there. So he comes here and we'll place him on the right medication and keep him monitored. And Big Anne said to Martin, you are a big, big woozy, a woozy. You see, only woozies hassle kids. Stay with your meds. If you stop taking them, you are totally crazy. A crazy person to boot. Then it was lunch the next day. And Brad took the biggest one. And Anne said, no, I want that. You have that. And Brad said, no, you are too fat. You need to lose weight. And Anne put Brad in a headlock which Ron and a nurse had to try and break up. But it was bloody hard, because Brad was a tough nut to crack. But Big Anne said, FUCK OFF! and stormed to a room without having lunch, and actually didn't have a meal till the next lunch. But she snacked on sweets, like chips, and when, when the sandwiches came out, Anne ate the most. And Martin said, I'm surprised you can fit in, you can fit this in your big stomach. And Anne frowned at Martin, saying, at least I don't hassle children. And another fight broke out, which involved Brad, Martin and Anne. And Ron brought in a 16-year-old boy who suffers from anxiety, who has just had a domestic with his mother and father. And his mother said, I think you need to be in the HDU. The kid's name was Jamie Lawson. And as far as his parents, knowing his every move at school, well, he is a closed book. But Ron Cooper was worried about the safety of Jamie around Martin Kelly. So Martin Kelly was put in solitary. So Jamie can't be harmed by him at least, and everything will go well. And meal after meal, and Brad started to play cards with Jamie. And when Kate and Susan came out, they made a foursome, and Jamie told them he was a great cards player. And Paddy Rowe walked around, all around the psych ward, talking to the nurses, and Ron said, Paddy, what are you doing? And Paddy said, I am George Washington, and this is the White House. I'm about to start my second term, and Ron said, Well, George, congratulations. Welcome to the year 2014. My name is Ron Cooper, and I have you captured in the good old suck ward. And Jamie was easily beating Brad in solitaire. And Brad said, I quit before I make a bigger fool of myself. And Jamie said, yeah, you crooks are too easy to beat. I mean that. You crooks are too easy to beat in any kind of the imagination. And Ron clocked off after working a full 16 hours. And he was about to head to Red Rooster and then home to have dinner. 
and have a sleep till he starts work at the hospital in 13 hours time. And, and then the next door neighbor started playing Motley Crue too loud. And Ron banged on the floor saying, Can you shut up? I am trying to sleep. I'm a doctor. If you don't, turn it down. I will call Centrelec about your living circumstances. And they turned it down straight away. And Ron fell asleep. The end. For the, for the first episode anyway. And I hope... You actually enjoyed that. It was a it was high how. It's a series of mine and I'm hoping would last quite a long time. Okay?